everybody. Welcome back. My voice might, you might have noticed my voice is a little different. Well, the boy came down with the old flu bug last week, took me down for a whole week. And uh, still trying to clear a uh, coughing and the hacking. Oh my goodness. Pretty much wrecked my voice for a little while here. It's still recovering. But at least I can actually talk now. So if uh, the sweet melody on my voice is what you came here to see, it's not It's not going to be here today. <laughs> but uh, hopefully as the week progresses on and we get more work done, I'll also improve my energy levels are back up to where I can actually get out and do something. And we're going to be doing it to Big Mo here. As you saw in the last video, we tore down to Chinatown, but we're not done yet. We got more work to do. And it's pretty cool. I left my I left my lights on uh, overnight. They they shut off like they said they would, and they just come back on now that I walk out here, which is pretty pretty cool. Um, something happened. Honestly, it's been two weeks since I've been out here, and if you notice, the I have to look in the previous video, but I can actually physically reach this right here right now. So you guys, then we can see it, that this whole hose diddy whopper here, it did break it off on this piece of pipe. And it probably broke off on the cylinder, so we'll have to fish that back out. Got a stick stuck right here. Yep. But uh, it's down in my face now, but as a result of relaxation we'll call it things kind of eased on down because yesterday when i was out here kind of assessing where i left off i noticed that my floor jack and the weight the weight that i took off from right here and the floor jack was right here is now back here you can see a part of it there well the whole tractor as that thing went down kind of went forward a little bit i'm glad i had it this far away from my workbench because it uh, kind of took away my space. I'm glad I got space. And I noticed that the, the weight had fallen over and the flat tire has run right over it. And this weight is now kind of, it's, it's wedged. It's not moving. And I'm guessing if that wasn't there, it'd probably roll a little bit further. I honestly didn't think it was gonna roll anywhere uh, but I did not set the brake in the rear end as, as well after I did all this because I'm like, it's flat ground. What, what could possibly happen? This, this could happen. This happened for sure. So I think I'm going to have to get me a couple of four buys. I'm going to put them underneath the back tires for now. And then I got to get some more OSB, which I have over against the back wall over here pieces of it to kind of jack the weight back up which it can jack up but it's right against i can't go up too high there you go goes against the i don't know what you call the bar that goes straight across to the the tie rod ends but uh Yep, it's, oh, sorry about the camera action here. I'm hoping I can get that snuck out from underneath there now. Let's, let's get in a wrestling match. How about that? Let's just get you guys right here. And we're just going to wrestle till I'm tired. I'm going to get another piece of board. Be nice if I could actually move the tractor back, but that ain't happening. Cause we ain't starting this engine up. Well, yeah, I don't have any water in it right now. That's for sure. What can I do here? One of your last commenters, I did what you asked me to do, said it was because it was an excellent idea. I'm trying to remember the name. I might put it down here if it's okay with you. I guess it's okay with you. Leave it things in the comments. So 
to get a kiddie pool and put it underneath here. I bought one. And uh, to do all this cleaning up of all this horrible greasy stuff and try to keep my rocks, you know, so fresh and so clean. Let's see here, maybe if I can lower this, can I? Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. Hey, that was easier than I thought. Whoop. Hit a rock, come on. One, two, three, go. Hey, hey, got that out from underneath there. Oh. Oh. Come on, that's a chunk of iron. Now I'll get my dolly out here. Yep, I'll get my dolly out here and uh, move that to the side. Then my next thing I want to do is jack up the front end of this thing and maybe get my couple of uh, heavy duty jack stands under it because we're going to pull these wheels off, but we need to block that up. Okay. At least if it decides to come forward a little bit more, it'll stop. Stop the madness. Stop the madness. I got my dolly here. This was a dolly I built when I was in my 20s. Not in the 1920s, in my 20s, okay? For all you young whippersnappers out there wanting to make fun of me. But uh, I copied it after one in the first shop I worked in. We had one in this kind of curved shape because we used to strap barrels to it and move full barrels around. It's already pitched back. It's really designed well, so I copied it. I'm really good at copying things. Okay, how heavy are you? Dear Lord. That's, uh, that's got some heft to it. Can I just slide it off the side here? It's all oily on the bottom. Oh boy. Yeah, that'll never get back up there again. Yep, still healing. But yeah, this thing's got a lot of leverage. That's, that piece of cast there's got a lot of weight to it. There we go. We just want to wheel this on. Goodness, move. Oh my gosh. Stay in place, O-ring. All right, here we go. Yep, yep. Why? Oh, oh. Bug getting high centered there. That wouldn't have been any fun. Yeah. All right. Goodness. Like, I never, I never. Now do we think we have enough, does this three ton jack have enough poop? Freaking box elders crawling all over you. You guys have box elder bugs where you're from? <coughs> best, <coughs> best way, so sorry folks. The best way to get rid of box elder bugs. Ooh, this has still got some weight to her. It's coming up, bumping away, yeah is to mix some Dawn dishwashing soap in a spray bottle and you just go and start spraying those things down by the hordes and they fall to the ground dead. And it's crazy to believe that something that can save a baby, little baby ducks from an oil spill will kill a box elder bug dead. All right. Oh. Make no mistake about it. The front of this machine is heavy. Let me go. I need to get my jack stand so I can put them underneath there. And uh, cause these wheels are coming off. Oh. 
thud. And then once I got on jack stands, I can sneak this out of the way and get my uh, kiddie pool, as it were, underneath it. Oh, over here. Thud. Okay. This is feeling good. Okay. Heavy duty jack stands coming up. All right. Gotta go up a little higher. Your boy's getting his steps in today. Oh, this thing's so heavy. Let's see why they make heavy duty equipment. This three ton jack. Yeah. It's just enough. Right. Here, the boards are cracking underneath it. Oh. Good thing these are, I think these are six ton. The three ton jack picks it up. My six ton, I'm not going up as high as I can go. So to be, so I can get up a notch maybe. Cause it's more up in my teeth. Boy, there's a lot of pulling, not a lot of going up and there we go. To so get it up to a, I bought a kiddie pool that was only 12 inches high. Let's see what happens when I go down with this. Yeah. Rocks didn't crush. I think we're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ow, that tire's still full. Oh. Oh. I shake my right cheek back down. It just got shoved up into my hip joint. All right. Now I can get this out. Hooray. I'll park it over here out of the way. What do we got on this board? A couple of washers, a couple of spacers. We'll just put them right up there. And, uh, yeah, that, that put a dent in the board for sure. Uh-oh. Boss out here checking up on me over there, guys. You can't see her. And she's giving me the Keep an eye on you, Jester. Okay, she didn't do that, but just the way she looks at me makes me feel like this is happening. She's keeping, she's keeping me, put a muffler on that truck, you son of a gun. Straight pipe running, that son of a gun of a bee. How's your day going, babe? Look. I put wheel chocks under it, got it up off the ground on jack stands. We're gonna break the ta ta What's the odds those rattle tat off? Place your bets. What size is it? I'm curious. Ooh, not an inch and an eighth. A little smaller than. Inch and a sixteenth. Yep. Think I'm gonna go grab me some uh, penetration juice just to make sure it comes off. Ta da! Uh, I guess uh, it would be worth saying that, you know, another shout out to reliableaftermarketparts.com. Uh, they have they have a lot of these parts that I need and I'm gonna work with them a little bit to see if he can help me out possibly Either way. I'm not looking for freebies, but I'm willing to trade some sponsorship for some parts here and there And we'll see what he'll be able to do for us uh, Helped us out a great deal on these steering cylinders last time we did that. Oh, look at that play Well adjustment may be in order but uh 
We gotta get parts for it eventually. Well, this half inch DeWalt's got some rattle tat tat. Maybe not so much for that one. Alright, we'll get we'll come back to you. You're not ready to move yet. I wonder what the torque's supposed to be on these. I'm thinking a gabillion trillion. Sure. That one was half the threads of the other one. Well, and then there was one. This is going to fall off and crush me, isn't it? Hey! Thank you, Mr. DeWalt. Oh, now it's stuck. What do you know? It's on a pilot thing, I think. Let's see here. That's right. You want to get in a kicking contest with me? Man, that feels nice. But what we're trying to do here, oh, I'll move this over. Wow, you guys stop shaking just because I hit your wall. Um, there again, give me some room to work here, but I also want to replace these kingpin bushings and uh, the basically the thrust bearing that's on the bottom here. Let me get you a little closer. So the heavy equipment and also heavier trucks, they have a, what's called a kingpin that runs through the axle here. Has a, typically, there's a, a pin that's driven in here, got a nut on the other side here, draws it in to a flat spot on this shaft going through here. So we'll have to back that nut off, drive that pin back out. Typically you get a new pin with a king pin set, depending on which set you buy, right? And, uh, but it also comes with, you know, new bushings for this piece, top and bottom. Comes with new grease cirques. The reason I'm pulling these apart is I wasn't able to get the bottom zerk on the other side to take grease. And this one here has got one, I think it's busted off or missing. But anyway, we want to bring that back around. Now, this is one of those things I'm taking the opportunity to do everything I can to make this a much better machine than when I got it. Magnificent machine when I got it. I'm not discounting that at all. This thing is built upon built. That's what I do like about the heavy equipment is when you look at the, the welds um, and the joints and the size of steel and the size of cast of everything that's on here. I mean, my goodness, this here only has the front end tied to it. Big old back and forth cradle pin going back and forth through here for the old tippy the up and down, you know, so it, you know, basically a rock bouncer. But it's just, I mean, the only thing that's out here in front as you guys saw me disassemble is all the weights. And obviously this front end and just the magnitude of what weight it has to carry in the bucket. You know, when I'm picking up, let's just call it almost 2000 pounds in the bucket, right? So we'll pull the cap off of here. And then, uh, you know, I just realized all these studs are the same length. It's just the one looked longer cause it had a a shallower nut on it for some reason, but all these, these, some of these, that one looks a little different. It's got a different head on it than the rest. And uh, that's due to, at some point in history, somebody replaced the wheel stud, which is cool. You know, when I see stuff like that, I'd rather see that. That means somebody in history cared and replaced it instead of trying to run on, how many does this thing have? Two? four, six, eight, you know, somebody running on seven instead of eight, because it's like, ah, oh, you know, if seven won't hold it, eight never would type of philosophy. Uh, 
they cared enough to replace them when they when they went to the bad. And uh, so, and that also is indicative of everything I see here. You know, there's grease sticking out of things. There's there was somebody took some care of it to make it last this long. And way I look at old equipment is that when I buy it or I purchase it or I get an old boat from that's 50 years old that is more or less a barn find that's in great shape, a survivor, if you will, uh, that I want to be the next caretaker of it. And, you know, this thing, there's no reason why this tractor can't go to the next generation beyond me and be used for whatever they want to use it for when I'm done with it. Uh, just because these things were built so crazy heavy, they were designed for industrial use and abuse. Um, and that's, that's, and here you go. I'm putting, I bought it for X amount of dollars. I'm putting X amount of dollars in it, but I'm pretty sure I can work my money back out of it. Um, that's the way my mind works anyway. So, but, and I also get to, you know, one guy left a comment that said, oh, so glad you're doing this yourself as opposed to taking it somewhere. Well, I don't know anybody that works a regular job like myself could afford to pay somebody to do the magnitude of work that I'm doing here. So, you know, I'm all about and always been good with sweat equity in something. So there's no doubt in my mind that when I'm done with this tractor, that it's worth 15 K when I'm all done because of the things I've done to it. I know what I paid for it and I'll still be, uh, uh, not upside down on it. Let's just put it that way. So, and I'm going to have, I'm going to know what I have in a lot of the tractor. Cause when I take it apart and put it back together, I know what it's all about. And that's always been, you know, a little bit of a, let's call it a pride thing with me, uh, knowing that I can possibly do it better than somebody else. And I really, really have a hard time paying somebody else to do something that I can do. So that's why we're here today. That's why we're doing what we're doing. All right. I'm not going to pull that wheel bearing off right now. I don't think I want to. I just wanted to get that tire out of my way. Plus, I'm going to get that flat tire out of my way. Let's see how many of those we can get off. I got a class 12 tunnel rat going on here. Whoa. So... Let's cover that in. We'll check back on that later. All right, where do you guys want to hang out? I'm gonna set you on the ladder rung here. And uh, I'm sorry about it being a little darker on this side. I need another row of lights on this beam, but it's not in the budget just yet. I got a, I got a budget gobbler here for sure. Okay, how many will these rattle tad off? Oh yeah, we're talking money. Yeah. Mr. D. Walt won't take no for an answer. Some of you might have said, why didn't you break those loose before you jacked it up? Because honestly, I didn't think about it, okay? Looks like it's not a problem. Sorry I blew up. <laughs> well, that was pretty much very... Ow! In the back! In the back! Uh, very successful there. You got a lug nut pan. How stuck do you guys think this one is, huh? I have to kick it too. Hey, yeah, huh? That's right. Whoop! I whooped up on it. Come on, flat tire. We're moving. All right. <coughs> what do I got here? How, uh, a little bit of play in that one. 
I can hear a little more in that one. All right. Well, I'm to a point now. I want to see where these uh these two hoses go down through because I want to get them out. Looks like they're just completely packed in. I think I'm going to get me uh let's see here. I got one right here. Let's get the old pry bar in here and just do a little digging. There's a lot of garbage. Wow. There's a lot of dirt back here. Pinching up against these hoses. I'm sure that didn't help anything. Wow. How long does it take that much dirt to get packed in here? It's relatively dry. It's not crazy oily. I mean, as far as... Looks like some good black uh iowa fawn dirt i'm sure some of the darkness has come from the let's just call it the diesel mildew here this could definitely inhibit my hoses from slipping through where they need to slip through possibly i don't know i don't see a hole yet I'm guessing there's supposed to be a generous hole sound here somewhere. Oh, there. Let's take a look, see underneath here. Now, when you go and they're working on stuff like this, it's, it behooves you to get some moving blankets there for the price and the comfort. They're worth the money. Worth it. You can put it all down on the ground here. You don't have to lay in the dirt and the gravel. Is what, that's what I'm saying. Just get it down here, oh, like I'm doing here, and I don't have to put my knees directly on a rock. All right, what do we got here? Let's get some light on the situation. All right. Well, the good news is it's a hard line right there. You guys see that? There's a hard line here and a hard line there, which is swimmingly awesome because now I'll be able to pull that hard line loose. I'm looking for any splits on it, but the oil is dripping right here. But if I break that loose and that one loose, I can pull these two up through that hole and we can look those lines over to see where our, our cut artery culprit is coming from all right i like that i was happy to see that i was kind of curious where this line was going to meet up because you see it goes back to this i have no idea what this expands into and then narrows back down to is that like a i lost my dead cat off my mic is that a uh a muffler is it a hydraulic muffler i don't know we're looking up through here into some stuff I haven't really looked at close before. Here's a hydraulic line in and out, back and forth. This looks like the hydraulic valve for my... Nope, it's not. I was thinking it was from my bucket, but those aren't from my bucket. Maybe they are. There's some shifter levers up there. Goodness. There's a hose hanging down back here. What is that hanging back here for? And why is it looking like it's just, it looks like it's for the swing cylinders on the back end of the swing cylinders. It looks pretty tough. And it looks like it's just hanging there, begging to get ripped off. So we gotta, I need to address that too. Goodness, where do you stop the bleed? Oh, okay. Big wrenches. God, I hope I can get a wrench on the, that one up there. I think if I get this one out of my way a little bit. Whew, and I think I got enough of the big JIC caps that I can cap this line off to keep the system as clean as possible. But yeah, that doesn't look like a very big hole. 
for these lines to fish up through, there's not a lot of extra, I would call it. Looks like that line there is kind of kind of bulging against the frame here. Well, that ain't good either. All right, let's get some wrenches. All right, we got the bottom one un unhooked here from the hard line. So let's see which one that one is. That one is on the top. So which one came loose there? I don't think it's that one. This one has some movement. Oh, let's pull her on through here. There we go. Oh yeah. That's where the culprit was right there. That's what rubbed through. There's hard wire sticking out there. Does this is what we're gonna need to have a new one of? Sure. It's one of them. Yeah, that's been rubbing on the frame a while. So, but that was the bottom one. And I'm saying you, telling you guys this, but it's also for me to go back and look later. But it's the bottom one, and it has a flat flange fitting that goes to the pump, which that should be the pressure side. Yep. Because the other side of the pump has just a right on top. So here's the here's that flange opening here. That's the intake side of the pump here. Ex ex exit side, putting the pressure to the system side of the pump. All right. Now I don't know if I can get the other one undone. My wrenches aren't quite big enough. I've got inch and a quarter is as big as I got, which fit one end of that hose. But the other one had to use my adjustable. It looks like an inch and a three sixteenths to maybe inch and a quarter which I'll take some measurements because I might have to purchase a couple more ranches. Okay, we're back out here on the track door. I started cleaning this up. As you can see down in here, this stuff had, it was thick. It was so thick down here and I could actually see yellow now. Got a lot more cleaning to do yet because that's not quite satisfactory. But you can see inside the old shop back here, there's a pile it's hard to see it in here, but there was areas that were two inches thick. And back through here, right there, is where the two hoses have to pass through that I had to remove. So I did get those hoses out, and I'm excited to tell you guys about the how I ended up getting the hoses because the one hose of the metal piece is no longer available, and it still had Fomoco on it which is, I think, Ford Motor Company. Uh, guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely correct me in the comments. But it had uh, still that stamped on the main return line. Now, the return line doesn't have near the pressure on it, but you can definitely tell by the rubber on the outside that it had some age on it. Uh, so what we're going to do next is uh, get over here and start... Uh, I'm waiting for my, <coughs> my EcoFlow battery to charge. That's what I was running my shop vac with. It was at 45% when I brought it out here, and it ran quite a while. It was a surprising amount of time, actually. Uh, so I was pretty tickled with that, but it's got about another 40 minutes to recharge. It only takes about an hour and a half to four, hour and uh, 45 minutes to charge back to full. Then I could run this shop vac for you know a good 45 minutes straight, which is pretty impressive. The one thing we're gonna get to today, hopefully, is we're going to get that fan off and we're going to get that water pump removed. We're going to get over here and get this off, get this, get this spindle and hub off of here because I want to take it in and repack it and clean it up. And then we're going to go after knocking out these kingpins. And we'll see how much tools I have out here. I've drug a few things out here with me over the since we started tearing this thing apart and uh, I got my little wedgie driver thing. Let's see how easy this cap comes off. Pretty easy. One thing nice about working on 
some of this heavy equipment stuff is everything is just so thick and big just like this cap here it's a it's a healthy cap Man, the wind is blowing like 20 to 30 miles an hour. Oh yeah, I'm glad we're going in here. The grease. It's sticky and stiff around the edges. You can tell it's been in here for a little while. I'm glad I'm pulling this off. The nice thing about doing all this is once I do it, I know now when the last time it's been done and I know what kind of lubrication it has in it and all that fun stuff. I got my needle nose pliers here. Let's see what we got for... Sorry, gonna need both my hands here. Well, just enough room to slip that cotter pin by that hub. Well designed. Yay, hey. That should just back right off of there. These had a little bit, I would call too much play in them. I'm kind of curious what the old uh, bearings are gonna look like once I get them out of here. Hopefully they're uh, just repackable and I don't have to do any repurchasing of these of this particular part anyway that'd be nice oh spindle looks great bearings are absolutely shot look at that, they're black black rusty well so much for that dream <laughs> new bearing time I guess I don't have to spend a lot of time degreasing those bearings now. Uh, normally I leave a ton of grease on these spindles while I'm not uh, working on them. Like on the trailers when I'm repacking and waiting on bearings to show up. But this is under the shade, under the cover of the lean-to here. Well, that's disappointing. More doll hairs. Good news is the spindle looks fantastic. It will work. Well, that's just a shame. Oh well. And these don't run it. And these don't run at high speed or anything. So there's really not much worry of uh, burning up a bearing like this. I'm not running down the highway at 20 miles an hour with this thing. Um, but looking at what I see there, nor would I want to until I had some fresh bearings in there. All right, well that's that's that piece of the puzzle. It answers that question for the, can't say driver's side because the seat's in the middle, but uh, I'd call it the left-hand side of the vehicle. All right, next thing we we'll do is knock this steering cylinder off here, and I'm gonna knock this piece off here. So this spindle floats freely, and then we'll get back here, and there's a, a nut right there that we have to take off this. We'll drive that out. Then we should be able to drive the spindle out of here. All right, we're getting ready to pull the, see if we can get the spindle off. Uh, well, that socket's way too big. Just gonna impact these off, and hopefully they don't let go before I get them off. That was easy. Now some of you say, just put that nut back on and drive on that. That's one way. I'm gonna show you what I do. We're gonna get on here and I'm gonna pry up against the joint there while I'm hitting right here on the side.
See like that, she'll pop right loose. Now this one can be a little more stubborn. I'm gonna get on here and lift up on it right here. Uh. Oh, that was tight. Still haven't got all, whoa, all my strength back from being sick. Still working on getting healed up as much as I can. Oh, that's heavy duty. Oh, heavy, heavy and heavy duty. Well, you gotta be able to pull and swing with all your might. There we go. Takes a few good smacks. Now we got everything loose. Now this thing's free falling. Now we gotta take that guy off right there. Now your new king pan sets typically come with new lock pins. So I'm really not worried about these threads. go and you can see this pin here has like a wedge shape to it it goes in there and just wedges that pin in place now the tougher part now if your axles in good shape this shouldn't be loose cool it's moving but it's tight other side I had to actually heat this up to get it to come out so I got my heavy duty punch here. This had an O-ring around the top, looks like. Yep. Which is supposed to help kind of kind of keep garbage out of it. The other side did not. that pin has a notch right there that that locking pin went into keeps this from going up or down looks like this is kind of a shield here on the inside of that spindle area I'll show you guys something here like on the other side if it's just as bad which it certainly is <laughs> That's supposed to be a bearing. It smooshed down so it had that much gap in there. Uh, this is supposed to take the whole weight of the front end of the tractor from this bottom side. Not only does it take the whole weight of the tractor, it takes the weight of whatever's in that bucket. And obviously this hasn't been moving for years. The good news is the face of this isn't too bad. Uh, but yeah, that spindle hasn't taken grease for years, so uh, either side, that's why this is all jacked up. That's why, you know, when they say grease your machine every eight hours or once a day or type of thing, they mean it for a reason. These things are under a lot of stress and a lot of abuse. I shouldn't say abuse, it's designed to do what it's doing, but it's with the aid of having some lubrication. All right. The front end is completely tore apart. Now the worst part about all this whole job is actually the cleaning up of everything. We got grease and we got to finish getting this. This front end will be good enough to eat off of when I'm done with it, I hope. Uh, but it takes a lot of effort to get there. And I won't bore you guys with the cleaning part. Let's go ahead and take this old fan off. And I want to get it to water pump. But I think I get the fan off so we can clean up everything before I pull the water pump off. I think that would be a wise choice.
belts have been on here a long time for sure. This is a belt I purchased last fall from Napa because I knew the belt was looking a little tough. But uh, as you can see, there's a lot to do just to get to the belt. I'm just going to do a little test fit here to make sure it's the right length. Nice thing is I do have the old belt I can also... Oh, that's quite a bit shorter. This alternator has three tapped holes in it. Could a fella. No, that's up tight there. Yeah, this belt's way too small. Good thing I got the old one. I can take it in, have them measure it, and get me a get me one of them. Bearings feel pretty good in here. But you know as well as I do that seal and everything is old, old, old. So that's why I want to put a new water pump on. Yeah, she spins and you can hear it moving some water in there. Now some of you might be thinking, wow, you bought a big piece of crap. I didn't. It's actually in really good shape. Your normal wear items, wore. Your lack of maintenance and stuff caused things to wear. Those wore. The bearing, got in some better light here. Look how black that bearing is. That ain't grease. That's dressed in dirt and grime everywhere. This bearing is stuck on the spindle. I had to get the hub. It, it finally pulled the seal out of the hub and the bearing came out. This bearing actually looks like it might be okay, but I'm not gonna reuse it. This spindle got a little rusty here, you know, just because it looks like the bearing. <laughs> but there's no major groove here and there's no major groove back here, which means it had been wearing, wearing into the spindle. So that's great news. So normal wear out items is what wore. The other good news is that these pins were tight in the axle. That's a whole nother ball of wax if those pins were not tight in the axle. Uh, I've repaired many of those over the years. Front, UPS front axles, straight front axles, all kinds of straight front axles where you actually ream it oversized make a bushing, drive the bush again, tack weld the bush again, and re-ream it to size so those pins fit proper. What happens on those pins is they'll start working. If they're ever loose, they'll just keep getting more and more loose. So that's the good news, right? I'm pretty tickled with everything I found. The other thing is these tapered holes where these tapered, you know, the ball end joints lock into, they're not wallered out, they're tight. So that's awesome. Yeah, these bearings, thrust bearings are, I ain't kidding you, they look like they're probably a quarter inch thinner than they're supposed to be. They're just mushroomed out here. They're, these bottom zerks hadn't got grease for a while. When you buy a kingpin set, a kingpin set will come with a new kingpin, it'll come with a new lock pin, it'll come with new thrust bearing, and it'll come with all the do 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 do. These bushings that go inside here, it'll come with those bushings as well. And so we're gonna freshen up this entire front end, which is pretty awesome, right? But yeah, it's, I apologize guys, this video is probably a little shorter than my normal videos. And some of you might be going, thank goodness. And some of you might be going, I didn't finish my popcorn or my breakfast or my coffee first. Well, your boy's just a little tuckered out. Um, this last week was the first week back to work and after being laid out for a week with the flu and my stomach today still ain't quite right. Let's just say it's uh, you can't trust a fart and I don't trust a fart just yet. <laughs> I know it's hard, too much information, but that's what condition I'm in right now. Uh, we're getting better though. We're going to keep getting better. And we're going to keep moving forward and Big Mo is going to get back together. Now it's the time to measure all my bearings and knock some of these bearings out, get some part numbers on them, and get some parts coming. Uh, we're going to be doing a few things in between videos here. Like maybe next Sunday might not be about Big Mo uh, because I'll be waiting on parts. And I'm not going to waste your guys' time watching me wash parts or 
wash the front end of that tractor. Next time you'll see it, it'll be clean. Uh, also, I have a little story to tell you about the, the two main hoses that come out from underneath the tractor. There is a pressure hose that had split on me, which started this whole thing. And then the return line coming back, you can't buy that anymore. But also between uh, my Napa store and another implement place nearby, we were able to come up with a solution, which I think is gonna work pretty well. And we'll go over what I'm gonna do there. And yeah, those hoses were in there a long time, been there a long time, one got cut. Did it need to get cut? That's what took its, wet. That's what took its life away. The rubber got cut and the metal shielding inside got rubbed thin enough it let the pressure out on the pressure hose. So we're gonna go back in there and do something to hopefully prevent it, maybe make it last you know, a decade longer as it were. My goal on this whole front end is put it back together. I'm gonna do, spend a lot of hours on this tractor using it, but I don't wanna do anything else to the front end because I will already have it done and then I will maintain it with grease and stuff. Some of the bucket bushings on the backhoe and the front are loose, sure. They can be loose a long time. I can just keep pumping grease in there and keep using them. Eventually, I will probably, when I'm bored and got all my backhoe work done, I'll go in there and probably line bore those out, re-weld them up and line bore them back to size and put fresh pins in it and tighten that all up real nice. But right now, she digs just fine. Bucket rattles a little bit, a little noisy. I'm fine with that. Hey folks, thanks for participating and spending your time with me watching. I do appreciate it very much so. I will see you on the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And the links below in the description are, will take you to other products that I use and like the uh, uh, Amazon uh, links will take you there to buy stuff. I appreciate it when you use those links. You can use those links anytime. You can always go back to my video, pull, pick up that link and go to, you, or go to Amazon and use that link anytime and buy whatever you want. And it helps me get a 3% commission. We're not talking a lot of money. It won't cost you a single dime, but they give me a little kickback for sending you guys over that way. And anybody that wants to do that, much appreciated. Every couple of dollars that come in helps fund the channel, helps me keep going on stuff like this because this stuff costs way more than I get back for sure. Uh, but I, I'm doing it anyway and I just wanna share it with you guys. And anything that can help relieve the pinch on the old wallet is much appreciated as well that way, right? All right, folks, this is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. We'll see you on the next video. I'm out.